It's an update on my super shade grow. So as you'll see, let's check out the canopy. I'm surrounded by trees. There's maybe an hour and a half window at midday, the full sun, uh, but pretty shady. Um, so it's been, it's been mixed results. Um, you'll see I'll definitely have have some things. Um, this guy's pretty much every node has been producing, but it's been a slow growing. Um, but I've been consistently picking stuff off. Uh, this guy's done very well. This is Fidelgo Roja, um, kind of a green leaved pheno. Often the leaves are on that one a little bit more purple. Um, it's been very productive and it, I can show you the productivity because I haven't really liked the flavor. Other people like them a lot. Um, I've got a number of different pubescents kind of stuck here and there. They've done essentially nothing. Um, but other ones have done very well. So this is the kind of productivity I've gotten off of the rest of the plant. Um, although I've, I've picked it, these are uh, ghostly jalapenos. They've been doing decent. Um, it's a seven pajona that it's got a, you know, a number. Um, it, it did not produce earlier on. So earlier in the plant's growth, there were not a bunch of pods down here. This one has done consistently really well. This is a cappuccino bonnet and it's got a pretty legitimate bonnet flavor, like a yellow one, but different because it's, it's not a yellow one. Um, but definitely um, it, not like a habanero flavor, like some bonnets can end up having. Um, I've been very pleased with it. Some of the shapes are are very yellow bonnet like uh, so I, I, I kind of suspect that this is actually a legitimate mutation and not just a cross between you know say a bonnet and something else I should remember the name of these what are these um, the Serlano yeah these have done well um, I've not really enjoyed the flavor on them and the pods as you can see are quite small but quite prolific Another seven pot Jonah. I'm starting to put out stuff. This is a, a Jay's Peach Go Scorpion. Um, they've done pretty good. This I, I pulled a ton of pods off of. This is uh, sparkly white. Um, I should also remember this. Uh, I'll, I'll remember. I think it's by Fatali Seeds. And this is a seven pot Jonah Pimienta done well. This produced a lot of pods earlier on. This is Carbonero, but um, I think I pulled everything off of it. And then if I run over here, you can start to see some of my Bacottoms. I'd say most of these have struggled pretty significantly in the amount of shade that they're under. Um, this is another one, so I'll let... Um, fantasy, Ahi Fantasy, that's that's right, Ahi Fantasy has done really well, um, and then Ahi Mango over there has done really well, but I haven't really liked the flavor, um, Cap 455 is another favorite of mine that has done decently well, uh oh, I gotta keep moving, um, Another one of these Ahi Fantasy Sparkly Whites is bumping out a lot of, a lot of pods. Um, let me run to the front. Mm, it's got a little zing to it. Put some um, Rokoto types pubescents out here. Um, not really gotten fruit off to them. Maybe like one or two, but nothing very significant. So this has a lot more sun, as you can see. This is Jay's Peach Coast Scorpion. This one's done awesome. Now that I put it out in more sun, I've got them Thunder Mountain Longhorn. These have done really well. Um, I had one, actually a couple that were 18 inches long, just short of world record. We got another Zimba Jonah. And then I've recently put some seedlings out here. Kind of silly to do, but um, I had them. And um, I will brag on this. This is 
um, a Jedi F1 jalapeno hybrid from Johnny's Seeds that has just produced mountains of jalapenos for me. Really, really, really happy with that. If you like jalapenos um, with just the right amount of heat, with just the right flavor, and with insane productivity for a very long season like Florida has, which I'm in, I highly recommend those. Same thing with these Cayennes. This is um, Red Ember F1 hybrid from Johnny's. These have also been uh, producing incredibly consistently over the entire season, both early and um, up until now, and it is early September. Um, just great pods. Very useful. Google them, make sauce with them, powder them. Really excellent. Um, and then I got a couple other things. This is one of my favorite of the season. This is a yellow starfish that has just been um, a really consistent producer. And the pods are just fantastic. Perfect crunch, perfect sweetness, and then kind of this yellow richness that um, is very pleasant to eat. Some bacottoms have some unpleasant flavors that I don't really like, but this has got enough of that. Um, this is Cajamarca. This is from the New Mexico Chili Pepper Institute, and it's a Peruvian variety. Um, aesthetically, it's a, a beautiful plant, and you know it's growing in the shade right now. Um, only indirect sun. Um, but prior to that, I had it in a grow tent. It was, just, it was a very beautiful plant. But there's something about Peruvian chinins that it's like a texture thing. I think they're bred maybe to dry well. Um, so they have kind of a leathery, um, kind of tough pod uh, wall. They don't really like for eating. Um, but maybe it'd do well for drying out. Um, and this is, this is the most exciting for me. So this is a Fidalga Roja Cross. And, um, this is kind of the pod shape. They ripen into red. I don't have any that are ripe right now. Um, but the flavor is just absolutely fantastic. So if you can take all of the best flavors in a Scotch bonnet, a true yellow scotch bonnet um, and then have it in a red pod and have basically the heat of a scotch bonnet too um, this is it it's the best tasting pepper I've ever had so um, I'm hoping all of these have a ton of seeds in them um, I've already made a bunch of cuttings from it and i um, been extremely pleased with that speaking of which let me come over here oh and then there's some more pubescents that essentially produce nothing, like maybe two or three. A little bit disappointed with that. Um, these are some cuttings from that Fidalga Roja. And you know the absorbent stuff in diapers? So apparently that stuff was originally developed um, for agricultural purposes. And so they would put that in the soil and it would retain just the right amount of moisture. I'm trying to like dig up a piece. So I've got a bunch of that diaper stuff in this pot. And uh, these were cuttings from the other Fidelga Roja, if I didn't already say that. And um, it was from a science kit. And the science kit had kids do uh, three different treatments. One, um, you would have just soil. The other one, you would have just this, this absorbent diaper additive and then three a mix of the soil and the, the diaper additive and um, the purpose of that was to show that the soil plus this diaper additive were really excellent for growing plants anyway I, I seem to agree with that this is in full sun and you know normally in full sun with a fabric pot I'd be watering this every day in the heat of summer but I haven't had to and it's these these have only been here I don't know, two, three weeks, something like that. They've they've really thrived. Um, and so now I'm wondering whether I need to keep trying that because it keeps it moist, but not wet. And that's the, the perfect thing that you want for growing. And I think that's all I really want to show right now. Maybe one more thing, which is this Cat 455, which is a sweet bacotum type with no heat at all. 
and it's just a delight to crunch down on. Um, the flavor is fantastic. It's got that rich red bacotum flavor without any of the weird bacotum um, kind of flavors that I don't like. And then I've got a pubescence here, um, like a red manzano type, and nothing off of it. I'm kind of disappointed with pubescents for the most part because they just don't produce for me. Oh, I'm going to keep it through the winter and see if I can get anything. Um, I'll have some some freezes here in northern Florida, but I might be able to cover it and see if that's the trick or not. Anyway, that's kind of my update. Thank you guys.